So, uh, as I said, this, uh, this architect of whom I learned uh, myself uh, very recently, um, you know, it, it is a problem. There are very important architects in the world that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very possible that you, you just uh, don't hear of or, uh, you know, in the multitude of, uh, of names, uh, you know, you, you, could, uh, you could just uh, ignore someone who, whose work is significant. And, and, and the work of Nikolai or Niels, uh, he is also known as Niels Ekved, uh, it, it was important. So um, Nikolai, Nikolai Ekved, also known as Niels Ekved, um, born on the 4th of June, 1701, and he died on the 7th of June, 1754. So he was 53 years old when he died, was a Danish architect. He introduced and was the leading proponent of the French Rococo or late Baroque style in Danish architecture during the 1730s and 1740s. He designed and built some of the most preeminent buildings of his time, a number of which still stand to this day. He also played an important role in the establishment of the Royal Danish Academy of Art and was its first native born uh, leader. Now, this will be really uh, just an introduction into his work. Uh, I'm, I'm not at all an expert in his work, but this is a way to, to pay homage to an architect who meant something, not, not just for Denmark, but for architecture in general. Uh, I didn't see a portrait of him, but it is presumed that this uh, had, uh, which was part of a building, belongs to him. That what it, it is a portrait, a sculpted portrait of this uh, Danish, um, Danish architect. And this is also in his uh, memory, uh, in memoriam, some, you know, a base relief, uh, maybe based on, on, on a project by him, I don't know, you see his name there at the top. Um, okay, some drawings, a few drawings by him, um, you know, 18th century, the 18th century, but you know, he, 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 although he is associated somehow with the French Rococo, in my opinion, his work is um, a very restrained form of, of Baroque. Um, but maybe, you know, using the standards of, of a Scandinavian country, he was, uh, you know, considered a, a Rococo architect. We'll see. I, I, most of his buildings are like this. I mean, we'll do call this Rococo. Maybe inside there are some rooms which are more exuberant, but towards the outside, they are, you know, quite, uh, uh, quite austere. Anyway, uh, yes, the interior has some decoration, uh, but uh, still <laughs> from here to Rococo, <clears throat> I think there is some distance. Okay, so, um, but, but, but the architecture of Denmark, uh, it, it has its distinctiveness and, uh, you know, uh, even for a non-expert like me, you can tell, you can feel that there is a, a, an architecture which is not French, which is not Italian, which is not uh, Russian or uh, British, is, is, is uh, Danish. Uh, and uh, you, you will see just, we looked, I have about 70 pictures with his work. Uh, this is an interior, I don't know, for some I couldn't find pictures. This might be one of them, yes. But uh, um, this one I think uh, I have is, is, uh, is the so-called marble bridge in Copenhagen. So it was uh, built between 1739, 1745. Uh, interesting idea to use marble for a, for a bridge. Um, I don't know of any other bridge using marble, but it seems that this one in Copenhagen uh, deserves its name. He also designed the pavilions left and right on the sides of the bridge. Um, and uh, yeah, it is in Copenhagen. But you see the, 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 the architecture is uh, with the exception of uh, some uh, 
inflamed parts uh, in the corner of the buildings, they are, you know, rather so-called classical. I, I mean, uh, without a lot of uh, ecstasy or uh, exuberance. Well, it's good to know that, uh, you know, that, that Den Denmark didn't give to the world just um, Bjarke Ingels. Well, of course, there was also John Woodson, but somehow everybody is uh, concerned with the Bjarke Ingels these days. They forget that, uh, you know, there was, um, and they had some other very good architects like Arn Jakobsen, the great uh, uh, international style architect, if I am to, if I am to call him so, and there, there were others. Um, so we just looked at the marble bridge uh, by this uh, Danish architect from the 18th century. Now this one, no, I didn't find pictures. Uh, this one also, I don't know. And now we arrive at a palace uh, that he built between 1743 and 1744. So, 278 uh, years ago. Again, you know, I, as far as I know about the history of architecture, this wouldn't qualify for a Rococo building, even for a French Rococo. Rococo stands for, uh, you know, the, the ultimate inflammation of, of the Baroque. And uh, this is, but, but this is often the case where towards the exterior, the building is less exuberant than, than the interiors. Uh, it, it was not so easy to find uh, pictures with the works of this architect. And, and uh, the, the list of works that I worked with was actually in, in Danish. And it was a little bit difficult because I, I of course I don't know the Danish, and uh, also the way of, of, of uh, describing the work is a little bit different than the British or the, the English way or American way. But anyway, I, I found some, some, some images with his work. And um, yeah, this is a palace, you know, uh, again, in, in, in Copenhagen, it seems almost everything is in Copenhagen or it was now in the present, there are important cities where, you know, interesting things happen. Uh, this is a, a, you know, like a mansion in, in, in the country and very much, I would say Danish somehow with a dark roof and then the, the very light uh, walls, uh, you know, a pastoral bucolic, place, uh, you know, uh, obviously not for the proletarians, but uh, a dignified, sweet uh, place. What can we say? Interesting the roofs, you know, with, uh, you know, the central parts. I'm talking about the left and the right uh, uh, buildings. It's always very nice in a Scandinavian country when it is sunny, you know, and the, the, the sun somehow is even more valued because, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not a uh, uh, very frequent um, uh, recurrence or occurrence. Uh, so, you know, this was done by him. Then we see, uh, uh, I, think, I think this was a, uh, um, uh, not a hospital. I read, I translated for this, that this was an experiment, uh, again, derived somehow from the French, where they created, um, the, you know, the habitable uh, uh, roofs, like you see here, you know, following uh, Francois Mansart. Uh, this one, I, this, this is a large, uh, um, um, depot, uh, you know, that, well, in the 18th century, it was like this and the beam building still stand. It's a massive urban uh, block designed by him. Still, uh, I would say very austere by the standards of other countries or other cultures. 
more romantic is the is the ship than the building. And by the way, of Bjarke Ingels, it seems he lives on a ship. His home is on a ship. That's an interesting idea, and it's probably very nice. I'm sure he afforded uh, to to create a nice home for himself on the ship. Okay, now this uh, there were, but again, I don't know if I have pictures. I do, uh, you know, important buildings. Uh, he designed uh, several, but it wasn't very clear to me which ones. Um, if this one and this one, or just this one, or just this one, I don't know. But uh, they, they are in a very prestigious uh, uh, place in, um, in, in Comp Copenhagen. I think these two were designed by him. And the proximity of water, of course, is always uh, a great plus. Uh, another urban uh, building, uh, rather, you know, uh, massive. Now this is a hospital which uh, became actually the uh, museum of design uh, in, in, in Copenhagen, the Danish design museum. But initially it was a hospital that he, he designed. We see there on the right a poster with uh, uh, Toulouse-Lautrec. I guess they have exhibitions with other things, not just, uh, not just design or maybe poster design, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I read about this, yes, it's a building, but I don't know exactly its, uh, its function. I, uh, I translate it, but I forgot its, uh, its uh, translation from, from Danish. Uh, I have to learn Danish in order to make this presentation again. I, I remember about this, I read uh, he, he only contributed to this big existing building. He added these four towers and maybe also this, this part of the building. Not the whole building was done by him, but the four towers, um, I remember reading that he, um, uh, he added to, to, to the building. Interesting uh, addition in a way. And now this is a, a church uh, in, uh, in Copenhagen. And I think this is the last uh, uh, work that I, I show today about this uh, architect or, or of this architect is uh, quite a tall uh, spire. Inter interesting the interior because it has a flat roof and it's, you know, it could have been something else, not necessarily a church. It could have been, I don't know, a gathering room in a university or a, a very unusual somehow and actually interesting, you know, with those uh, enclosed galleries and uh, with, you know, two or three levels of galleries. Really, if I would have seen this and uh, it would have been difficult at first to truly think that this is a church, especially if I uh, didn't look carefully on the left, but on the right, uh, really an unusual church. Actually interesting somehow, it's an interesting idea. It's almost as if the sacred and the profane met or intersected in this building. Yes, it was the outside, it is a church all right, but inside is, is something else. 
And this is the last image uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the works of, of this Danish architect today.